this is the situation I presently find myself in. And please allow me a moment of public therapy here as I talk to you intimately about something that's happening and bouncing around in my head. I'm clearly deteriorating. Over the last three years, you know, it just climate change waking me up at night just because it feels like 100, I'm not making this up, it feels like 108 degrees, a heat wave is coming to Florida, Canada's burning, so I'm going a little bit crazy that we're ignoring scientists about, hey, 15 companies have left Florida, insurance companies have left Florida because we can't insure things down there anymore because the storms are getting bigger and it doesn't make sense business-wise. For us to insure homes, I'm building a home, I'm trying to build a home, Already insurance rates are four times higher than anywhere else, and 15 companies have recently left, and it's small on the list of problems that climate change is wreaking all over the world right now, because we are somehow undercovering the story of our times, which is we're consuming the livable atmosphere. But the heat were great, and the Panthers were great, and thanks for the distraction. While doing this as well, I, and I don't want to keep making this excuse, but over the last three years, people who I love have had deteriorating health issues that have made my life exponentially harder while trying to run a company that I'm not an entrepreneur. And you just hear me on the air. I'm yammering too much. I sound crazed. And Mike is somehow worse than me. Is this your apology? No. But he wants an apology, and the, the conundrum I have right now is he will not return until I've apologized to him, and now Amin has left too, and of course Stugatz isn't here, because yesterday while eating uh, crumbs and leaving them all over the desk here, he said vacation mode, Dan, before we started the show. And then did That last day before vacation is always fun at Okay, work. didn't know it was his vacation. It was just they, they stopped playing, the team stopped playing, and he said, okay, I don't have opinions for the next couple of days because I don't want to talk or pay attention to the Mets. And so he took what he wanted to from this company, as people often do, and what's left in return is my life is falling apart and I'm deteriorating in every way. And have also an assortment of health stuff, probably wrought by the pressures of the last three years. And, and now- And I'm in this chair. Well, this is, no, well, I'm getting to you. I'm getting to you in this, because right now I've kicked so many people out of the room that my present scenario, is I have Jeremy, Tony, Roy, and Chris Cody. I'm trying to, I was <laughs> What's wrong say, with that? Ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Bobby. Jeez, I've been here for 18 years, man. You, you know I'm good. Uh, I know, but the problem I have is that for the last two years, as our audience has complained, and I'm, you know, under it a little bit, as our audience, too many microphones, too many people. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I do. That's kind of the thing that built the thing, is that the, the microphones get given away. What ends up happening is over three years, a show built on chemistry. I'm working with different bleeping people and crews every day. This particular crew is one I've never had. It's just the four of you. It's not... In our defense, you did kick everybody else out. I, oh, yeah, I'm, aware that I'm aware that I am pointing at myself here. I'm aware... That I am the hot dog character, and I think you should leave now. This is a balanced unit, though. You want jazz hands? I'm here. You want some serious hockey? Roy's here. Hi. You want a homer? Well, we got Jeremy in the back I, corner. Hey, and I, with Tony, you got everything else. What do you need? Okay, I'm, I appreciate your confidence. I have less of it than you do, but I don't blame you guys. It's just because I've gotten tethered to doing the show with an executive producer who, like Jokic, doesn't want to be the executive producer anymore. And now Whittingham's gone. He was the one who was trained for the position. And now Chris Cody has stepped into the breach. And Mike is sulking in another room right now and has been for an hour. I didn't give him an hour penalty, but he says he's not coming out of the penalty till I apologize. And I'm not going to apologize to him for saying he's been obnoxious for two months because all I've done is, by saying it, been redundant. Everyone knows how obnoxious he's been for two months. It's not a bit. He's been maximum Heat fan. Guy was a Heat fan before LeBron got here. Do you know how obnoxious the fan base became when it had LeBron? He raised a bunch of obnoxious Miami people and thinks he's entitled to be the most obnoxious. 
and he wanted to talk about Bradley Beal. There's a lot to talk about with these teams. I want to talk about. I want to talk about. I love the two days after the Heat get eliminated, all of a sudden what I'm picking up is Barry Jackson saying, yeah, Beal and Lillard are possible. Oh, I love it. Uh, Jeremy's Thumbs over here. Up, baby. Jeremy's yeah. over here building out another mat, like oh, a, a team on. with four superstars on it. I Who mean, are we keeping, though? Come on. Wait a minute. Just stop for a second and stop being asinine. Uh, Mickey Harrison has never gone over the tax. You want him to go hundreds of millions over the tax. To get Bradley Beal's bad contract, I'd love to have Bradley Beal, incidentally. But that's a bad contract with a no-trade clause. And Lillard? The hell are you people smoking? Like this We'll is- give up uh, Duncan. Who else, Jeremy? Who are we yeah. going to give up? Yurtsevin. Gabe Vincent. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be Yurt. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll give you Highsmith and Yurtsevin, and we'll get back uh, Lillard and Beal. Yeah, so I'm back to doing that show. It works on the trade machine. I mean, they said that the Wizards don't want that much, so it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying that two days after the championship, you've reached an entitled, spoiled, awful place when you're not even talking the next day about getting one of them. It's both of them. Yeah, throw Harden in there, too. Just keep throwing people in there because the Heat are going to get everybody. At least it's better than after last year where they were making photoshops of Luka Doncic somehow in a Heat uniform. I don't know what that was about. That was a very strange That's Photoshop season, though, SZN. Yeah, correct. Zion, too. Get them all down here. Uh, I, because Mike Ryan has left and took whatever it is was the flimsy skeleton of this show with him, I want to hear Parade of Gas Bags. We have a couple of them, and I, so far, we've only played one of them. So if you would be kind enough, this is what Mike took with him, and I don't know what we have in terms of sound and video, but I know one of the things that I wanted was that, the Parade of Gas Bags, And also, and this needs editing. See, this is one of the places that Mike is needed around here is I'm also told that only a week late after the death of the Iron Sheik, we now have a montage. And I think I might be able to lure him out by telling him it hasn't been properly edited and all of our salaries can go away right now if we play an that iron, is a dangerous game. We, if we play an Iron Sheik montage in order to empty the file, because he was a main character around this show in its beginnings, and we did because the Heat and Panthers were going so crazy. We did a poor job of eulogizing a character, a wrestling character, that while all while a friend of the show also was a complete lunatic. Because we were covering wrestling in a way that had, I believe it was B. Brian Blair tell us that he got on an airplane one time and the Iron Sheik was in first class smoking crack. When I'm sitting in this chair, I don't feel good playing the Sheik thing until Mike's heard it. So I do have Parade of Gas Bags, though. Okay, uh, uh, so go ahead and play the Iron Sheik then. (laughs) I don't have that right now. (laughs) Here's Gas Bags. There's just something about this team, though, that I do think they're going to be hard to kill. Because they're champions. You know who's not? Who? Denver. Wow. Never done it. They don't know how to no, win. Woo! Whoa. That is the enthusiasm of Tyler Hero being upgraded to questionable. Questionable! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Can't be Heat and Seven without three Nuggets wins. That's all I'll say. Culture chatter is in Denver radio. The Nuggets played like... You coward! Let's go! Cool, Carl. Because Denver, <laughs> it like, is, they've not even felt like a big contender to win the title while Jokic has been there. I think it's that we don't we don't like that he's un poquito gordito. So I, we look at him and go, eh. W- when we look back on this era, we will look back on, all right, Nic- oh, Nicole Jokic, he must have dominated that era. Look, he won three straight MVPs. Has that happened I recently? Can't, I cannot give him three. You, you just can't. On principle alone. You got to show me something in the poll. I know it's a regular and, season award, but you got to show and, me and something. By, and by the way, if you look at Denver's run, part of this is because uh, Jamal Murray has been hurt, but they're pretty roundly smoked out of the playoffs. I'm pretty sure the people talking to me, all of them, haven't seen Jokic play. <laughs> they're in for a surprise, man. <laughs> 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 All I heard in there was how annoying Witty is when he says the word era. When era. Is, when is he going to start paying some of his grid of death punishments, including doing a show from a bathtub? When is he going to apologize for his Matthew Kachuk take? We want a lot of we want a lot of apologies today. We, we want one from Witty. Mike wants one from Dan. Amin wants one from Dan. 
We got to keep track of these. They are outside right now. And uh, speaking of climate change, you guys have noticed, right, the last couple of years, unreasonably hot uh, before summer even really gets going. Because I don't think this is the hot time of our year. I think I, when I think of hottest time of South Florida, I think of August. We're all going to break some records here. And it really is feels like 108. It, and not just here. In Texas as well. This is a legitimate punishment. They are right now protesting in the streets across from the arena, and it's legitimate suffering. More than the writers' strikers who have, uh, you know, better weather than what it is that they're presently sitting in. Look at them. Looks like the mutiny's already gone down. They're, they're beaten down. Bench. I'm going to beat them down. But what do I do about Mike Ryan? Look at them. Yes, no, they're busted. Five they're, minutes ago, yes, they were I like, know, "We know. stand strong," and now they're just on a bench. I know. Just it's like, it's oh, legitimate punishment. Yes, it's pretty awful. But what I got I- news for you, by the way, if it feels like 108, it's 108. The best Chris Cody take of ever it's, of all time on this show. I get angry anytime I hear this. Oh, it's 98 degrees. It feels like this. It's like. What are we doing here? What is temperature? It's what I feel. Exactly. Like, what are we doing? Exactly. I need someone to come on here and really explain to me why what it feels like isn't the just the temperature. You know what? Put it on the poll, Juju, at Levitard Show. If it feels like 108 degrees, is it then indeed 108 degrees? Nope, it's 97. It just feels like 108. All that really matters <laughs> is tell me what the temperature like, like, what feels the, like. What are we doing here? I, I learned, speaking of climate change, I had never heard of the of the wet bulb effect, which is basically what it sounds like. You put water on a, on a light bulb, the sweat doesn't come off it. It just gets dried up. What? Not livable conditions for humans. Like, you reach a point where feels like this kind of hot is not going to be something that you can live in. It's, it's not that far off. Like, we keep thinking, yeah, our kids will deal with it. It's it's kind of here right now. It's been here. It's it's been here, and now Coogs is laying on the floor. Their protest is really falling apart. I mean, he's shirtless. I mean, what is happening? I mean, he's taking off his shirt because it's so hot. Not a great angle. Gratuitous. <laughs> He's, he's a foreigner. He's just there. Like, he just can't be marketed. Outside of his play, the most interesting thing about him is that his <laughs> arms are perpetually right. bleeding. It wasn't appointment television for me to watch Nikola Jokic. He doesn't inspire that. You have to win championships to get America's attention. I mean, he's not the superstar you want representing your game. It's not aesthetically pleasing. This incredibly excellent basketball player, but a considerable lack of playoff success. Bam can frustrate him. He needs to do more winning for the narrative to be drawn around him. When, when he's a star in an NBA Finals, and, and all of a sudden America cannot not appreciate him, that's when he becomes the next level superstar. He's boring. Boom. Cody and, and Stugatz are here to tell you, not enough. Boring. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> That's what I'll say. That, I, he's not boring at all. Uh, jump. I mean. His game is boring. <laughs> his game is absolutely, like, you can't. His game was boring when he was winning two MVP awards. Yeah, his, yeah. Game, his game is Rich. not boring. It's he's, just not, a fallacy. he's not a national <laughs> television game, darling. Can't. It's not Kobe. It's not LeBron. It is not Magic Johnson. It is none of those guys. It's all of them in one. No, it's a guy It's a guy who can barely jump. You don't enjoy watching him play? I no, find it very enjoyable watching no, him play. No, no, it's an ugly brand of basketball. No, I mean, he takes, no. th- takes three-point shots flat-footed. Flatfoot. That would be my uh, nickname for him. Jesus. I am more appalled hearing that the second time than the time that when I was in it and I was plenty appalled and called it the worst opinion in the history of this show. Stu Gatz and Cody very comfortable with it. They are not alone in that opinion. I see a mean sag every time as someone who deeply cares about basketball when he hears just how stupid they sound calling that style boring. The very start to that. He's a foreigner. That's right. <laughs> who said that, by the way? Yeah, well, you said un poco gordito también. Well, that's true, though. The foreigner part, I don't know who said Is, that. I'll put it on the poll, please, Juju. Is uh, Jokic a little fat? Or, or is Jokic Chubby. un poco gordito? Aren't poco we all? Gordito. Yes, we are. His I mean, grandma his grandma calls him Gordito. I mean, uh, your protest is now over because it was too hot outside, because you you forgot your cause while you were out no, no. there? I appreciated your apology that you gave me off air, Dan. I didn't apologize to you. It's, it's okay. He's doing a bit, guys. It's okay. 
he, he apologized. So it's, I, it was very heartfelt. I, I appreciate Where's it. Mike if you think I apologized? To well, people. Mike didn't get an apology because he didn't protest. Mike, this is what happens. You get when you when you break with the union. Guess what? You're on your own out there, you scab. Mike has been in the penalty box for an hour and fifteen minutes, and I ask this of the audience: What a blessed relief, huh? Just to, to get yeah. a reprieve for the first time in months of that freight train of cocaine opinion. He's in some room now that behind him it just says bleep Reddit. And it's signed Mike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's going to work out for him. In, ca- in case you're wondering, <laughs> who's, who's, who's making this well, but statement? This is the thing. He has earned the big head with all the deals that he's making. This is what's happened around here. This is another thing you've noticed in the last two months and some things that you haven't noticed. Like, he is now a player. He is a deal maker. He is somebody who's working Hollywood. He's working sources. He is in all of the power rooms. He's in all of the rooms where the decisions are being made in sports. He's breaking a messy story on the side. And it's gone to his head legitimately. He doesn't mind fighting the audience because uh, like his credentials are earned and his resume has gotten stronger. And what do you articulate? He didn't have a Panthers credential, though, I remember. Mm-mm. Yeah, that is true. I still got mine right here. Yeah, there you go. What Show, him, he, Mike. Show what, him, Roy. What he articulated during the break, he very much feels put upon, having been demoted back to executive producer of this little project. Yes. This little project. He tried to leave that job behind and grow at Metal Arc Media, a company that prides itself on not having a seat for my wife. <laughs> it prides itself. <laughs> Uh, tell me more about this Metal Arc LA initiative because I am very intrigued. An hour flight instead of the five hours I got to do every week? Tell me more. No, you still have to come here. We have made a deal, and I don't care anymore what's announced and what's not announced with Hyper Objects and uh, Adam McKay, and uh, we are, <laughs> are going to make a bunch of things together. I don't that care anymore. That sounds I just don't the, care the, the what's being announced. I'm not caring anymore about whether I'm doing things according to protocol or this executive wants that and this lawyer wants that. I am so done with all of that. Man, find another way to give my wife no seat at a Tribeca Film Festival and see what comes spilling out of my mouth. I mean, that news sounds big that you just poo pooed yeah there. whatever we've yeah. got a lot of deals coming up and i'll leak more and more of them i'm not going to apologize to mike but i will cause problems at the company that he will at some point have to come in here and try and clean up janitorially if he doesn't quit i mean i got a mop dan where's your peabody do you know where it is or did you lose that too I haven't won any of those awards. Oh. We have never. We are just He's like now. Jokic. You just, you know, where that. is it? No, no, it's not. I haven't, but wait. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm still first round, losing second round. Jokic. Wait. W e i g h t. We have not just. We have not just won a bunch of yeah. awards. What happened, Chris Cody? I didn't even hear the joke, but they were all saying I should do it. You so can't. Like, you have got to treat that sacredly. You can't just give away the heat. The we team. just bullied him into no, it. No, wait a minute. Roy, wait. Our brain trust is. Are you kidding me? Tony, Roy, and Jeremy. No, hey, wait, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Our brain Stay trust strong, doesn't get to Brust. be Roy, Tony, it, and Jeremy. No, I need to be in that. I need to be in that. Thank you. Because of all your stellar work from Vegas. <laughs> oh, that's true. I was on the ice, Dan. Me and Roy were so unaligned on this trip. Can someone explain to me who's right here? Okay. Roy thinks, is is unaligned? No, no, yeah, but like, what do you mean by that? I'm I'm about to explain it. Thank you. (laughs) We, we, I wanted to do, like, when we're sent to Vegas on this Uh trip, is it more beneficial to us, like, to attack Vegas and that be documented, or should we be at Morning Skate? Like, what's the priority? Look, man, I'm going to tell you exactly how my team, Juju, and uh, Taylor and uh, and Thomas, when he came out for Game Five, how we do it, we do both. We attack the city and then we show up for media availability. Well, morning skate is just you go and they skate and you're watching. But you're around all the other media people, you're schmoozing, you're learning things. That's the that's the job, Chris Cody. That's the job. I thought it was just have fun and they'll just document us. No, I mean we can have fun. I'll be too. in Vegas, hey, doing my thing, playing craps, drinking one of those big drinks. Little fruity drinks. This, this is what you do, Chris. It's work hard, play hard. I, I, saw, I, I, I saw you last week. I, I worked and played hard. Hard as By hell. By the end of it, woof. Yeah, nothing. I left it all out there, though. See, that's how you do it. That's a pro. I wouldn't call the things that have been produced by this company what? recently maximum professional. What? I would not. Did you not see my hunt for the Jokic brothers? 
that finally uh, produced Jokic Brothers. We hadn't seen them all series long until I put out that video. And then all of a sudden, we're getting shots all the time of them. And, and all of a sudden, they're manifesting. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Because you guys were all just going along with hearsay. I made it real, Dan. I'd like to go back for a second and just understand the schism that Chris Cody and Roy had. Because... You'll see it documented, by the way. We're going to release a video today or tomorrow, and it is just the whole time us fighting because he wants to go to Morning Skate, and I want to do Vegas, baby. Yacht couple. We, we, we got to do both. Did we do both? You'll find out. Okay. We will find out together. Again, though, we won't find out during the finals or at a time that makes it seem expedient immediately after yeah. the finals. We will have to wait several S days. We did so much that it's like you got to edit it. So it's Dan, do thing. you want it fast? Do you want it well? Or do you want it cheap? You can get two of those three. Can I get any of them? <laughs> any of them? Because I haven't gotten any of them. Because it's cheap and it's good. But it's nope. not fast. I don't know about cheap. Nope. 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 <laughs> haven't gotten cheap. Haven't gotten fast. Haven't gotten good. <laughs> nope. You got good. Come on. All right. We'll see. We'll judge it together whenever you release the content, probably next hockey season. Tomorrow. August. We'll see. I wanted to talk about a couple of documentaries, I mean, that mm -hmm. I've seen uh, recently. Uh, there's one on Army Hammer's family and the cannibalism that Army Hammer is accused of fantasizing about while abusing women, wanting to eat, surgically remove and eat one rib, is somehow... Not the most shocking thing about his entire family history that was involved with the founding of communism and also Watergate. Who eats one rib? Chris Rock. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'm going to get you sucked. Good reference. There you go. The Bow. The I, I do it for Roy. There, thank you. The that one I heard. The more, the more interesting documentary I saw, though, uh, because I had not seen this. This was old. It's on Max. And evidently, this is uh, CNN and Discovery production, so mm. this is not an HBO thing. Mm. It's the but, crap they start Well, it, usually it's crap. There is a lot of crap there, but I saw a documentary about, uh, it was called American Pain, about the opioid problem in Florida where a couple of ridiculous meatheads were able to create a pioneering illegal opioid business in an unregulated Florida, millions of pills turning strip mall clinics into tailgates where people were outside smoking opioids and a medical center that looked like the DMV with the number of addicts and people in there. And it's not a comedy because there are babies addicted to opioids and people dying, and it's truly, truly terrible. But the one comedic thing about it is just the video of all of these stupid cavemen clowns in Florida, convicted felons who were able to get rich on our pill mills, because at one point Broward had 150 of them. It Broward just... had 150 of them, but just like idiots and criminals comedically physically you look at them and you're like this person cannot be trusted these are these are simply drug dealers very clearly a jury would convict them based on their photographs of being <laughs> idiots of being morons and they changed the entire game and forced regulations on florida because they were just drug dealing in places that they wanted to have pool tables in like they had doctors and were kind of making them Something that felt like a nightclub and so, a college football atmosphere. Just here's Oxycontin by the barrel load. And and they had so much money that they had to keep it in trash bags. The This was legal under the laws at the time? Well, it was something that was allowed to happen in public until they started looking around and regulating. And no, a whole lot of people ended up going to prison. But for years, it was largely unregulated because Florida is just insane. It was a bit of a gray area, too, because they were just basically giving Oxycontin to anybody, right? And... Who, div who actually started discovering that this was happening was detectives and sheriffs in Kentucky and Ohio and different places like that where they would have people that would drive from those locations down to Fort Lauderdale and Broward, pick up the pills, and then take them back. Wow. So they're having ODs and overdoses of people that have Florida prescriptions. And they're like, how is this happening? Oh, it's these guys. People driving 20 hours to and for 
uh, Kentucky just because they they got candy stores down in Broward. They're just giving the stuff away. It was legitimately shocking, even me understanding that we are a pill mill factory in South Florida, but just seeing it come to life in a way that was the dirtiest kind of profiteering, callously killing people and throwing them to addiction because fools, clowns, and meatheads were pioneering in an industry where they were able to sell more drugs pseudo-legally than anyone else. American Pain, ironically enough, is the name of the movie.